Good morning and welcome. Uh, thank you for connecting on this call. We continue with chapter 2 of First Peter today. Let me just begin with a word of prayer. Abba Father, we thank you for your grace upon our lives. Thank you, Lord, that uh, you've led us thus far, uh, Lord, uh, and even in this course, Lord, for enabling us to uh, Lord, really, Lord, be blessed by the truth of your word in um, uh, several books of the Bible. Lord, as we are studying First Peter, we ask for your wisdom. Uh, Holy Spirit, minister to our hearts and lives. And uh, Lord, we pray, God, let, let this word um, be uh, implanted, O oh God, in our hearts. And uh, Father God, help us to live for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I recall that I stated we'll look at a few of the verses from the previous chapter. So let's go back to First Peter chapter 1. We saw that this letter was written. It was one, one of the early letters and written to both the Jews, Gentiles. There is encouragement coming through, but there's also um, some sections that talk about responsibilities uh, as a Christian, a Christian living duties, and uh, he's asking the believer to live this kind of a life uh, in the midst of the persecution you know, that uh, that is going on r right then and also the impending persecution. So we were somewhere near verse 18. Um, and we said that one can live a holy life. God is calling us to live a holy life. And he we have the blood of Jesus that sets us free from the aimless conduct uh, received by tradition from our fathers and such a victorious thought uh, that we have. And also the fact that we have not been redeemed by um, just anything, right? Or the worldly, worldly uh, valuable things, but we are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. And that is something that we must remember. And we know that Christ has sacrificed his own life for us. You know, it's, a, it's a very uh, profound thought that God loved us so much that he gave himself up in such a manner that uh, you know his very life was given for us. So to never forget that. Now, when we think of all these things, of course, you know, why did God go to that extent so that Satan can be defeated, so that we can live an overcoming life uh, and uh, and so you know we can live holy that's the um, reminder for all of us now let's look at more scriptures here yeah there is this thought of christ jesus being uh, god deciding that he will lay down his life before the foundation of the world. So verse 20, he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Even in the book of Revelation, scripture teaches us that the Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. That means God intended it in their heart. So just look at that. It's as if the act is done in the mind of God. It's already done. But the actual, like in the natural, it took place 2,000 years ago when Jesus came physically. He was born as a human being. And then, you know, he went ahead to the cross. He died for our sins. But in the heart of God, before he said, let there be light, Jesus had already done this in the mind of God. That's our understanding. So this is how God plans and thinks in his, in his mind, right? So the blueprint is already in his mind. And that is what unfolded in our world. So we read in Galatians 4.4 4, that, um, you know, it's the Son of God. In the fullness of time, Christ Jesus, he came, he appeared, and he died for us. So it was not like Adam sinned and a lot of sin uh, corrupted the world. And then God came up with a solution for that sin. It's not like that. Even before... The sin happened. You know, Genesis 3 happened. Scriptures are telling us in the mind of God, the idea or the plan that Jesus will be that perfect sacrifice was already 
established uh, and so you know that's being spoken to us and we uh, through him believe in god who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in god and uh, as we said earlier he gives us something to hold on to the hope uh, speaking about resurrection and uh, he's saying that look even though it was so painful and difficult there is victory in that christ jesus died uh, and and you know he was buried that's true but he also was raised from the dead and you know our faith is such a glorious faith it's such a uh, powerful faith we are not like people of the world who don't have any hope but we are people of hope because after death came resurrection and uh, so we are people who carry that hope of resurrection with us so be strong you know this world is but uh, temporary in that sense uh, and uh, you know be bold be strong we can live a holy life so in that context he was saying all these things now as we move on to the next section here he says since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren love one another fervently with a pure heart remember we said uh, some instructions for godly living one is brotherly kindness brotherly love which is also needed in the community of god's people so there is an emphasis on that um, and then you know he says we are born again by by the word of god so which is the incorruptible seed uh, in our lives and uh, the word of god is very powerful because the word of god always remains so the word of god is eternal that's the point so uh, we have something which will endure through all things the word endures forever so the word of god just like god his word is eternal and we can establish that by what peter is saying here and uh, we move on now to the second chapter so here again there will be uh, exhortation about the identity of the believer and then he will move on to speaking about submission to uh, various authority structures so let's quickly read through chapter 2 and uh, then we can you know go ahead if possible we can even read chapter 3 because the submission aspect news there let me just check Okay let's let's do two and then we can come Excuse me ma'am Yes yes uh, brother Lubeka Yesterday I tried to attach yeah. my work on uh, and it refused but what did it on your email I don't know whether it will be considered Okay uh, thank you for letting me know uh, I'll I'll just uh, respond to you on, about that Okay, sure. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, go now to chapter two here, and we read it in two sections as we did earlier. There are twenty-five verses, so one person could please read twelve and the other thirteen verses. First Peter chapter two, verse one to twelve. Therefore, lay aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. As newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tested that the Lord is gracious, coming uh, coming to Him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious, you also, as living stones, are being built up. a spiritual house a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable uh, to God through Jesus Christ therefore it is also contained in the scripture behold i lay in zion a chief cornerstone in lake precious and he who believes on him will not will by no means be put to shame therefore to you who believe he is precious God to those who are disobedient the stone which the builders rejects a uh, rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense the stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed 
but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once you were not a people but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. Beloved, I beg you as so generous and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which were against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evil the worst, they may be they may by your good works which they observe glorify God in the day of visitation. Okay, thank you, uh, Zeli. We have the next section here. Who would like to read it out for us? Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to governors as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evil birds and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free, yet not using liberty as a clock for vice, but as born servants of God. Honor all people, love the brotherhood, hear God, another thing. Servants, be submissive to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the hearts. For this is commendable. If because of conscience toward God, one endures grief suffering wrongfully for what a credit is it if when you are beaten for your faults you take it patiently but when you do good and suffer if you take it patiently this is the commendable before god but do this you are called because christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that you should follow his steps who committed no sin nor was deceit found in his mouth who when he was revealed did not reveal revile in uh, return when he suffered he did not threaten but committed himself to him who judges righteously who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes you are healed for you are, for you were like sheep going astray but having now returned to the safer and overseer of your soul Ma'am, you're muted. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Rosalind. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. So I was saying we'll go ahead and explain what we've just learned. Uh, so as we shared earlier, there is uh, an encouragement to live holy because of who we are in Christ. You know, he talked about um, you know we we being the people of God, we having a more permanent uh, membership. In, in heaven and we are just pilgrims and sojourners here on earth uh, and uh, you know we have this eternal word of god that has been given to us uh, christ jesus has done powerful things through his blood for us so you know we are we are a special people uh, and uh, that you know one one needs to live out this this life that uh, has internally spiritually been accomplished for us now there are again we would notice that the theme no uh it's us uh, at the end of the day who have created these chapters and verses so there are uh, different topics that go through each each um, chapter here may or may not exactly be linked to the the previous section so um I mean, let let that not uh, worry us. Let's just take from you know what it is sharing. So he spoke about all these matters, and now he is giving us the uh, insight that maturity is needed. 
maturity is needed even the writer of the hebrews right in in the times when he was encouraging the believers he said uh, now go on to maturity hebrews chapter 5 you need to become more mature in christ by now you should have all been teachers you know but i still have to uh, talk to you about the basics of the of the gospel so maturity maturity uh, and there's a there's a pointer to maturity by peter also he says come on become more mature and in saying that he's he's talking about how one should live a more spiritual like walk in the spirit like how paul spoke uh, in in um, uh, ephesian no uh, is it yeah galatians 5 galatians 5 he talks about walking in the spirit right so to yield to the spirit is maturity not yielding to the flesh and here peter also says that he says laying aside malice all deceit hypocrisy envy evil speaking what are what, where do these come under they come under the category of the flesh activities of the flesh so he says we must become more mature we must be more yielded to the spirit of god and he says uh, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby so that's where he's inviting the people you need to grow up grow up in god and uh, how to grow up how to become that spiritual believer yield to the word of god yield to the word of god and he talks about desiring the word of god how to desire the word of god now we all know there's a reference to newborn babes because the only only uh, uh, source of nourishment that they they can be built by is a mother's milk that's how they are designed now they even if we feed them other things it will not set right with them the way they are designed is to have the milk the mother's milk now he's talking about the newborn babe's desire that's the point here so newborn babe's desire for milk we know for anything and everything you know they need to be fed if they're crying it's probably that they are hungry uh, if they look uncomfortable it's probably that they are hungry it's always that they want milk right and and it nourishes them it strengthens them so he's saying as a believer our desire for the word of god should be like the newborn babe desiring milk okay so uh that kind of eagerness that always i want i want uh that nourishment from god and always eager to receive the word of god when we become like that then he says you may grow thereby now once i become so desirous of the word of god growth will happen right remember paul also uh, spoke in uh, uh, acts uh, 2032 he he points us to to uh, the fact that the word of god will build you up so our growth comes from the word of god in our lives and uh, so he is encouraging the believers come on it's time to grow up and the way to grow up is to commit ourselves to the word of god and now uh, he encourages them saying that you know they are the believers are chosen by the lord and uh, even if they go through persecution it's like christ who was rejected but now Christ is the chief cornerstone that stone which was rejected has become the chief cornerstone and you are also living stones he uses this this picture of a living stone um and we know that a building is built with stones uh, it's built with bricks now what is the importance of that living stone so that entire structure is formed by individual stones similarly the house of god he's talking about a spiritual house now we know as the body of christ or the church of our lord jesus christ the family of god we have different terms to describe ourselves ecclesia you know god's uh, people who are called out we are the gathering of god we are also a spiritual house now though we don't look like a building spiritually the house of god is formed by every single one of us all of us and he's saying we are not dead stones because usual buildings are made out of stones that can't speak stones that can't think but the house spiritual house of god is formed by living stones and uh, the thing about living stones is they can be used if they are yielded if they are not yielded see because the stone is living it can go off anywhere it wants but that's not how we build the building right if god says okay you this is your purpose you have to be here hopefully that stone is there only dead stone will be there but living stone you can't guarantee but when we are 
yielded to God. No, we are those yielded living stones, and through us obeying, you know, His purpose that He has for us, God is building up His spiritual house. You now, how beautiful! With all of us, uh, you know, He's building a beautiful place to hold His presence, and uh, you know, He's uh, Peter is also calling us holy priesthood because earlier we know that only the priest could go in but now we believers we have uh, through the blood of jesus right we have been brought near to god that's what scripture tells us and so we can offer up a s sacrifices to god directly we don't need a mediator jesus has become our mediator so he says your position in christ now is you are a holy priesthood <laughs> and you offer spiritual sacri sacrifices acceptable to god through Jesus Christ. Now, this is where we say the old practices, going into a temple and you know making a sacrifice, no longer valid for a believer. But there are still sacrifices that scripture talks about, but these sacrifices are spiritual sacrifices. What could be some of the spiritual sacrifices? We know praise is a sacrifice of our lips. So praise is a sacrifice. Our own life, offering our life to God, dedicating our life to God, obeying God, yielding to God is a spiritual sacrifice. Our giving to God is a sacrifice. It's a spiritual sacrifice when we give to the Lord, when we you know, bless people in the name of God. That's a spiritual sacrifice. So now the kind of sacrifices which we give to the Lord are different from the kind which the people offered in the temple. Uh, so he's just reminding us, look, this all this has happened. You are now so blessed as a people. And always remember, um, because this has happened because of Jesus. Okay? And uh, that uh, Jesus was that, chief, that stone who was rejected, but he has become the chief cornerstone now. So we could even say that he's, he's saying, uh, people are facing so much of persecution. So there must have been an atmosphere of rejection also. So it's a good reminder to know that even Jesus went through rejection. But God chose him. And thereby, you know, God uh, caused him uh, to be so precious that he's become the chief cornerstone. Like if God has chosen, that is our uh, consolation. That is our comfort. So even you as a people, even though, they may have been facing opposition. We may be facing opposition, difficulties, rejection. When we are chosen by the Lord, that comforts us. That gives us our strength. And I've heard that, um, you know, there are, uh, one second, just go. Yeah. The, uh, verse 7. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, uh, you know, the stone which the builders rejected, he, he has become the chief cornerstone. So he's saying those who are disobedient, for them, the power of the cross, it doesn't get applied in their lives. But to us who believe, it is uh, precious. So I've heard that, I think Charles Spurgeon, he preached a message on this topic. To you who believe, he is precious. An entire sermon on that particular uh, scripture. So, the more we learn about Christ, we understand why is He so precious because of all the things that have been accomplished. And uh, Peter is exhorting the believers. He is reminding them of their position in Christ. He's saying, "You are a chosen generation." You know the way Christ Jesus is chosen by God. You too are chosen. Maybe rejected by people, but you are chosen by God, chosen generation, um, and uh, royal priesthood, right? Royal priesthood, because now we are we are kings, we are priests unto the Lord. We carry authority. What is royal? Royal carrying authority, and Christ has given us authority. Priesthood, we can approach God directly. We can minister to God. We can minister to people. So the ability to do that is priesthood, holy nation. Yes, God has made us holy. Uh, he has empowered us to be holy. And, and so he's calling them a holy nation, a special people. And what is the purpose of being uh, so special? You know, sometimes it gives us such a boost to hear that, oh, you know, I am chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation, special people. But 
there is a purpose for being all this in that same scripture the end of that scripture says that you may proclaim the praises of him so what why did god make us so special chosen blessed victorious prosperous so that we may proclaim his praises so he's reminding there is a purpose we are here to glorify god as a believer the purpose of our lives is to praise god or uh, you know what is it that through our lives we can do how can we live in such a way that in our generation the name of god can be praised so understand that purpose that's what he is telling the believers okay uh, let all our lives praise god because of who he has now made us and he's reminding us we were earlier not even a people but now we are the people of god what a privilege because of what jesus has done we've been brought into the kingdom we've been brought into the family of god so he's calling the believers from verse 11 you know he says okay now that you understand that we are we are supposed to praise god don't live fleshly lives live a godly lives and he says the fleshly lusts war against the soul okay, very important you probably would have learned about this in uh, uh what is that the battlefield of the mind there is an apc publication so we we see that when a believer yields to fleshly lusts it destroys their soul because that's what the scripture is saying there is an opposing effect fleshly lust war against the soul so it's not possible that a believer yielding to lust and still being healthy in our soul right like still being fit in our soul cannot happen because scripture clearly says there is a war going on so when we yield to you know uh, the uh, maybe um uh, lustful sexual desires lustful thoughts the uh, lusting after money lusting after uh, the the things of the world riches so when we we live that kind of an uncontrolled uh, uncontrolled uh, passion for all these things uh, and we are living a fleshly life it will destroy our soul right uh, so that's a warning that's a warning for us that we cannot have ungodly lives we cannot be sowing to the flesh because we are going to reap of the flesh if we do that so godly life is so very important for a healthy soul even the soul part of us for our emotions for our will uh, and our um, mind to be healthy uh, to stay away stay away from fleshly lust and he says have a honorable conduct honorable conduct conduct among the gentiles so what does that mean basically he says live a godly life uh, for your own health sake and also maintain a testimony what is a testimony you see of course we shouldn't uh, you know uh, may our main motive is that we must live right before god god should say that yeah you are righteous you are you are correct so that is the way we live uh, but at the same time there is value to the the way people perceive our lives uh, right if if we are living a righteous life before people that's what we call a good testimony a good testimony is also important so peter is saying we can't say that i am righteous i am good i don't care what people say there is some value in having a good testimony before people so how do i behave myself in front of people is also necessary he's saying in fact not just any people the unbelievers what are the unbelievers saying about us are we living in such a way that the unbeliever can condemn us if yes if the unbeliever can easily condemn us and say hey look at that believer how they live their lives then we are missing something but instead of that peter's instruction is your conduct honorable among the gentiles 
so a godly life even before those who are unbelievers and he's saying when we live like that even if spe people speak against um, you know evil against you they will observe the good things and you know they'll know that you are a righteous person so that's a tall order actually it's it's a challenging thing but he says that's how we must live live an honorable life even among the gentiles so that they know your good works which means there's got to be good works in the life of a believer uh, right now there are two uh, sections that address submission one is submission to government second is submission to masters so when we speak about submission to government we know in romans 13 there is a reference where we are called to honor uh, the authority that god has placed on our lives uh, there is a call in uh, first timothy chapter 2 verse 1 where paul uh, calls the believers he says look let petitions prayers intercession thanksgiving be made for all people verse 2 he says for kings and all those in authority that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness so it's a biblical thing to honor authority government authority uh, and and so he calls the believer and he says look this uh, authority has been given by god to us so you walk in submission what is submission submission is yieldedness yielded to the authority so in verse 13 uh, of first peter chapter 2 he says therefore submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the lord's sake whether to the king as supreme or to governors as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good so God has placed authority to regulate, right, in society, uh, you know, the good and, and uh, like overcome the evil. So there is a purpose why God has appointed authority. And Peter is saying, just like Paul, Peter is also saying, respect authority. Now, in their, in their life, uh, as we, we did the book of Acts, there also we saw towards the end, uh, Paul says, my conscience is clear. I have not done anything evil against uh, man or against God. I'm sure of that, right? So they lived their life in such a way that they respected the authority. Yes, at a time when uh, authority is asking us to go against God, those are the times when both Paul, Peter, they stood up. Now you remember, right? The early chapters of, of uh, the book of Acts, when Peter says that uh, you can't stop us. We will preach in the name of Jesus. So when authority is asking us to, to uh, be disobedient to God, those are moments where we've got to rise up and say sorry. We can look back even at the life of Daniel and uh, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. They were asked to um, worship other gods. They were asked to do things that was common for the people in Babylon and they refused. They said no. Like, even if we die, we will not do that. So when authority is forcing us to do something against God, that's when we must put our foot down. Uh, but otherwise, in general, the Bible says we must respect God-given authority, our government. We must pray for leaders. We must not, you know, like... Um, uh, uh, sort of grumble and uh, uh, let them down. Right? We, we need to pray for them. Yes, is everything going right? We may find that certain things are not going right. So what should a believer do in that situation? Pray. Pray. First Timothy chapter 2, uh, you know, verse 2 says that. Pray for them. Pray for them that they may be able to do what is right in God's sight. So this is in relation to government. So what are we supposed to do? Submit. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. For whose sake? For the Lord's sake, so that God's name will not be, uh, you know, let, put down. Okay, verse 15. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, uh, as free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for wise, but as bond servants of Christ. So, uh, bond servants of God. So, he's reminding us that actually by the word of god actually by the work of the cross we have been set free so we we are free we are not bond servants to anyone 
in that sense because jesus has set us free from uh, the slavery of sin and the slavery of satan so we are liberated but willingly what we are doing is for the lord's sake right and because this is the will of god and to put to silence the ignorance of foolish men we are yielding ourselves to authority right just because we have freedom we can't say hey i am a believer i am a citizen of heaven i won't follow any government rules no i won't follow traffic rules i am from another i am another person right we can't say things like that we'll have to follow what the government uh, it puts down right and uh, peter is calling us he's saying honor all people love the brotherhood fear god honor the king so there's a way of living a righteous life where we are respectful of the people around us and particularly you know he he says love the brotherhood which means uh, the believers the body of believers there's a special love for the body of believers where we are ready to minister where we are ready to uphold one another uh, strengthen one another so that is the attitude one must carry towards the body of believers and of course you know towards god godly fear fear god and uh, towards the uh, government authorities honor them honor them now that was the section about honoring the authorities now this next section here is about uh submitting to masters now i do understand that uh masters is for our generation we don't like that word because it it reminds us of slavery which obviously was was what uh, you know society had way back then today this can be applied uh, in the work relationships where we have bosses and we have uh, superiors we have managers so this next section is applicable for uh, that context so here uh, it, the scripture says servants be submissive to your masters with all fear not only to the good and gentle but also to the harsh for this is commendable if because of conscience toward god one endures grief suffering wrongfully for what credit it, Uh, is it if when you are beaten for your faults you take it patiently but when you do good and suffer if you take it patiently this is commendable before god for to this you were called because christ also suffered for us leaving us an example and you should follow his steps so uh, actually quite interesting where first it says submit to the master servant submit to the masters which means today we are supposed to submit to our authority in the workplace okay that is understood now the the second portion is interesting because we are being told be submissive not just to the good manager but also to the you know so called tough manager uh, maybe that manager is not gentle they are harsh you know so they are speaking roughly to us so something is going on where we feel oh this is not okay why should i listen yeah, to to this manager they are so harsh uh, or you know they are so rough and tough but he is reminding us of the uh, the fact that look at jesus even jesus suffered was it just that jesus suffered under the hands of the pharisees and the uh, you know the jews no there's no justice in that did he deserve it no he never deserved it but he was still quiet because he endured for the sake of god and that's the reminder for us now what happens if we work for uh, someone who is treating us unjustly yes we will do everything that is right we will trust god for bring to bring us out uh, victoriously ultimately our hope and trust is in the lord Uh, but even to such a manager or such a boss such a superior uh, the bible is saying you do the right thing they may not be doing the right thing but you do the right thing because of the example that jesus left for us now this should not be uh, misunderstood uh, stating that let's say if people are uh, treating us badly like abuse if there is abuse going on right uh, like okay let everyone walk over you and don't ever respond you know be that person who becomes a martyr that's that's not what it's saying it's not that extreme but uh, to a certain extent 
right uh, when we observe that we are we are being treated unjustly uh, in a in a workplace situation even then for the sake of the lord even if it is unjust to behave rightly and to still submit to authority uh, he says twice commendable 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 means uh, it it's worthy of applause it's a good thing it's a good thing so yeah that's a, that's like an instruction for us uh, in our work situation so even if sometimes such things happen we are the ones who have to sort of uh walk in submission okay now from verse 23 uh, it's again talking about jesus who when he was reviled did not revile in return when he suffered he did not threaten but committed himself to him who judges righteously so uh, it's all about jesus he says who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed so though he's only talking about the obedience of jesus the submission of jesus to the father there are other things uh, coming out here where we are learning about the redemptive work of jesus on the cross about our healing by the stripes of jesus we are healed and he says uh, our power to be righteous because he says he died to sins might live for righteousness which means you and i as believers we can be victorious over sins we can be healed from our sicknesses uh and from jesus's example we can also uh we can also overcome if we are going through some kind of an unjust treatment uh, by our superior and finally in the last uh, passage last verse there he says for you were like sheep going astray but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls so though it's talking about us coming back to god i want to remind us that we are told that we have a shepherd so this is a reminder because in john 334 we see scriptures say that um, jesus had the the spirit without measure so uh, one of the ways in which that passage is understood is that jesus carried the anointing in the ministry offices so we do have scriptures that talk about how he was a good teacher we do have scriptures that talk about like in hebrews 3:1 he is the apostle and high priest of our confession so he was in the office of the apostle we know jesus said uh, that uh, a prophet is not respected uh, among his own people so jesus himself called uh, him a prophet now here we are told that he is a shepherd shepherd that is pastor right so who is our ultimate pastor who is the overseer of our souls uh jesus he carries the anointing of a shepherd or a pastor right so uh, that is a reminder for us that our ultimate the person who carries the ultimate anointing in all the offices all five offices there's no person no human being who can carry the anointing of all the five fold ministry offices but our lord jesus he did he carried it okay because um you know he is that perfect example for us and uh, so the insights here as i stated earlier it's more about reminding the people of their identity the call to holy living the call to uh, you know not yield to fleshly lusts uh, and also uh, when it comes to to uh, submitting to authority you know he says submit to the government submit to the master and also let's remember uh, peter it it wasn't easy for them you know they were all going through persecution and you can imagine you know like a, a believer working for an unbeliever when they got ill treated peter is still saying you live a righteous life you trust god for justice okay so it can, is it easy to practice what we are preaching today in our class answer is definitely no uh but that's the instruction for us as believers and god is calling us uh to to uh do something which he he can empower us to do on our own 
of course we cannot but he strengthens us and we always have the example of jesus that will encourage us so with that i'm going to stop for today uh, and if there's any questions or any uh, anything to discuss let's talk about it All right, let's uh, pray and close then. Uh, I want to request one of us to please go ahead and lead in prayer. Honestly. Loving Father, once again, Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Master, for this uh, beautiful day, Lord. Uh, Lord, I thank you so much for speaking to us, Lord, through your daughter. Lord, continue to pray. The things, Lord, what we are learning, uh, help us, Lord, to apply it in our life. And the best to come, Lord, we will apply it in our ministry, Lord. Continuously, I pray for all the dear ones, Lord, those who are hearing and learning every day, Lord, continuously bless them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Subhashish. Thank you, everyone. Trust that uh, we were blessed uh, today. And yeah, we will connect again next week. Uh, let's see if we can wrap up First Peter. And uh, yeah, we, we have sufficient time to complete our portions. So take care. Uh, God bless.